Looking for a classic Hollywood sci-fi flick that's both entertaining and thought-provoking? Look no further than This Island Earth. Released in 1955, this movie packs a punch with its mix of suspense, action, and extraterrestrial intrigue. Follow the journey of Dr. Cal Meacham, a brilliant scientist who finds himself entangled in an interstellar conflict beyond his wildest dreams. But hold on tight, because there are plenty of amusing, surprising, and even touching facts about the movie that'll keep you glued to your screen. You might find yourself wondering which classic Hollywood actor steals the show. Was it the charismatic Rex Reason or the enigmatic Faith Dahmer? And here's a thought, has the movie impacted your life in any way? Maybe it sparked your interest in science fiction, or perhaps it left you pondering the mysteries of the universe long after the credits rolled. So, what's your most special memory or personal experience related to this island Earth? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share away, and let's keep the conversation going. Keep watching for more fascinating insights, and don't forget to share your thoughts. This island Earth is more than just a movie, it's an experience waiting to be shared. This Island Earth, a 1955 movie, offers an engaging space-age drama that captivates audiences with its intriguing storyline and reasonably decent acting. Despite potential criticisms of its special effects, they remain impressive for their time and still hold up well today. The meticulous attention to detail in costumes, sets, artwork, and lighting elevates the film, making it a visual delight. The inclusion of peculiar contraptions and imaginative gadgets adds to its memorability, ensuring it leaves a lasting impression on viewers, especially those with a youthful spirit and vivid imagination. The last portion of the film, set on Metaluna, boasts unforgettable visuals and stylish acting, particularly from Jeff Morrow and Rex Reason, though Faith Domerk's portrayal falls victim to typical 1950s heroine tropes. Despite some flaws for fans of 1950s science fiction, this island Earth remains a significant touchstone, showcasing better production values than many of its contemporaries. In the history of movies, this island Earth holds a special place. Even though it came out more than 10 years before Gilligan's Island, it indirectly affected the choice of actor for the professor in the TV show. Russell, who was in this island Earth, said no to the role at first, but eventually said yes after the producer kept asking. Also, the shock rock band Gore honored this island Earth by naming their fourth album This Toilet Earth, showing how the film has stayed important in different parts of culture. The flying saucer design in this island Earth was inspired by a real event called the McMinnville Incident in 1950. A farmer named Paul Trent said he took a picture of a flying object in McMinnville, Oregon, which gave the movie its cool spaceship. To sum up, this island Earth has influenced more than just movies, touching popular culture, and even affecting who gets cast in TV shows later on. Its lasting importance shows how much it has affected people and creative work. In the 1955 film, actress Faith Domerg faced wardrobe challenges during the alien ship scenes. Her skin-tight costume, designed to the extent that wearing underwear was impractical, required her to disrobe with assistance for both putting on and taking off. To prevent any damage, she couldn't sit down, leading the production crew to devise a slanted board for her to lean against. Despite her description, still images of the jumpsuit reveal it to be more tailored than the men's, yet visibly loose in certain areas. During the film's production, a copy found its way to MGM, coinciding with the preparation of another science fiction spectacle, Forbidden Planet. This connection highlights the contemporaneous interest in the genre as studios engaged with similar themes and styles. Notably, the miniature Earth used in special effects shots had a dual role. Apart from its appearance in this island Earth, it played a part in crafting the iconic Earth in space Universal Pictures fanfare opening from the 1950s to the 1980s. These behind-the-scenes insights and cross-studio connections offer a glimpse into the practicalities and interrelations of filmmaking during the mid-20th century. This Island Earth, released in 1955, utilized unique sound effects, mostly from radio teletype transmissions captured on a shortwave radio and played at different speeds. The film's lead actor, known for his roles as a scientist, passed away at his residence on Bainbridge Island, Washington State, with his wife Connie and daughter by his side. He is particularly recognized for his performances in This Island Earth and The Creature Walks Among Us. In this island Earth, the light airplane used by Dr. Meckham and Dr. Adams is a Stinson 105, a common four-seat light plane of the 1940s and 50s. 
Douglas Spencer, who portrays the Monitor, also appears early in the film as a newspaper reporter reminiscent of his role as Ned Scott in The Thing from Another World. Additionally, a large device resembling a desk with a coiled neon tube in the center can be spotted at the Ryberg Electronics Laboratory, a prop previously featured in Universal Pictures' Frankenstein films of the 1940s. In the movie, the plane piloted by Cal Meacham, saved from crashing, is a Lockheed T-33 shooting star, once used as a trainer and chase plane. Due to the rise in popularity of widescreen formats like Cinemascope, Universal Pictures began developing its own widescreen technology called Technorama. However, Technorama wasn't perfected until 1956. As a result, about 50 Universal films, including the one featuring the T-33 shooting star, were shot at full frame but composed and photographed to allow theaters to exhibit them at a widescreen ratio of 2-1. This Island Earth is among these films. The actor best known for his role as Professor Roy Hinckley on Gilligan's Island appeared in this film. After dinner, the German scientist says he needs some time alone to think after enjoying the music. He leaves while the others keep talking. Later on, a small old plane is waiting outside. Dr. Meacham, carrying some secrets, gets on board with a clear goal in mind. The plane starts up and takes off into the night sky, carrying Dr. Meacham toward more mysteries. This marks the beginning of another adventure filled with science and excitement. The night falls, but the memories of dinner remain. Released in 1955, the movie is famous for its memorable scenes and connections. During a dinner scene at a secret lab in Georgia, a woman compliments the background music, saying the music of Mozart is very beautiful in Finnish. The movie had a resurgence in the summer of 1960 when it was shown in U.S. drive-in theaters alongside Forbidden Planet. It was re-released in U.S. theaters again in July 1964. In 1964, a three-color reissue of the original full-color one-sheet poster from 1955 was produced, along with an abridged version of the 1955 press book. Russell Johnson, who later starred in Gilligan's Island, had previously provided narration for a film. Notably, the movie featured two of Johnson's co-stars, Rex Reason and Lance Fuller, along with two castmates from his earlier science fiction film, It Came From Outer Space, Barbara Rush and Joe Sawyer. The movie continues to be remembered for these connections and its influence on science fiction cinema. In the film, Charlotte Alpert makes her sole screen appearance as the only woman from Metaluna. She operates the control console for the decompression tubes aboard the saucer. Clips of the final scenes of the movie are watched by the main character in Explorers on his TV. During the filming of a scene in the lake, Faith Dolmerg and Rex Reason emerged covered in heavy mud and silt. Upon returning to the studio, the makeup artist had to strip Dahmerg's clothes, shower her naked, and scrub her body clean with huge sponges. 